In this episode, we chat with Shreya Adhav, an award-winning nutritionist and founder of the Spirit Eat Sports Nutrition Clinic in India. With more than five years of experience advising athletes across the globe, Shreya has worked with runners, triathletes, swimmers, ultra-endurance cyclists, and many others. She holds a master's degree in sports nutrition and has a personalized approach to dealing with her athletes ranging from Olympians, Arjuna Awardee winners, Ironman triathletes, and national and international level competitors. Shreya is also a frequent guest on conference stages, moderating and leading conversations around nutrition and how it can be implemented to improve performance, recovery, and overall well-being. There's a lot to learn when it comes to the complexities of the human body, from biochemistry to metabolism, so we discuss things like macronutrients, the glycemic index, supplements, healthy fats, the ketogenic diet, and much, much more. Shreya's secret to success? Creating healthy habits and not restrictions. I'm your host, Justin Tu. Let's roll. Hey, Ultra family, Justin Tu here, your host today of the Ultra Cycling Show. Thanks for tuning in to today's very special episode, which I'm sure will be extremely informative and educational, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of food for thought. I'm glad to have Shreya Adhav on the show today, the founder of Spirit Eats Sports Nutrition Clinic. She holds a master's degree in sports nutrition, so she's definitely an expert in the field. Shreya, nice to have you on the show today. Thank you so much, Justin, for inviting me. Yes, I'm excited to have you as the first official, perhaps full-time nutritionist on the show. I know a few of the other coaches have studied the subject matter, but I think you are definitely engrossed in it and you have been for many years. So I'm looking forward to speaking with you specifically on the subject of how nutrition applies to ultra endurance cycling but I know you have a variety of experience working with athletes of all ranges. And you've sent through some very nice photographs to go so visual of some of the people that you've worked with, some of the conferences that you've spoken at. And so I'm looking forward to getting into that and much more, but in the spirit of our show, of course, I've prepared a nice sprint round of questions for you. Just a fun way to get to know you in a, in a nutshell. Shreya, how long have you been advising endurance athletes or cyclists or ultra cyclists? I would say it's been more than two to three years now. Why? And they were not only the ultra cyclists or ultra uh, endurance athletes, but they were ultra swimmers, ultra runners, ultra triathletes as well. So there's been a wide range of ultra athletes uh, with whom I was working. Yeah, that's great. I'm sure you've learned a lot through that, especially specific to different athletes and perhaps even across the different sports. Now, I know you're a runner as well, right? How long have you been an endurance athlete? So to be honest, I was never an endurance athlete. I am more of a power athlete. That's what I have experienced and uh, understood over the period of time. Uh, but talking about running, I've been running for more than two years now. Uh, and I'm planning to start cycling soon so let's hope that goes well oh cool awesome yeah you'll have to keep watching the show then find some inspiration then i'm sure in a few years for sure we'll see you here in the race across america <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a wider story i would say but uh, why not i mean yeah. worth a try worth a shot for sure <laughs> now have you have you advised and counseled any RAM athletes? Uh, I have met RAM athletes uh, and in the pictures also which uh, you displayed, uh, there was a panel uh, of cyclists uh, with whom I was basically one of the nutritionists and there were people who have completed or you know who had did or who were planning to go for RAM. So I do have an idea about the event and I've not personally handled any particular athlete, but I do know that what is the sport all about and what kind of nutrition is required to do that amount of cycling. Hmm. Very fascinating. Is it this panel here that you're talking about? Yes, yes, yes. Cool. 
And who do we have here with you? So, uh, uh, towards my left hand side, there is Mr. Bharat Pannu. He recently, I think in 2020, he completed the virtual ramp. And the person next to me, I can't really recall his name, but he, even he's the one uh, who has completed ramp. Okay, Shreya. So, if you could tour anywhere on a bicycle, where would you want to go? If you ask me in India, I would definitely love to uh, tour somewhere in the northeast side because uh, that's a particular area where you can actually, uh, you know, be a part of the nature. You can actually relax and enjoy the entire journey. So that's a particular place which, where I would love to go on a tour. If abroad you ask me, then probably Europe would be some place that I would definitely love to tour. Oh, it sounds good. All right, bring me along for the trip. <laughs> sure. Why not? Okay. How about when you're exercising, perhaps running, what's your favorite mm -hmm. exercise snack? What do you like eating? Uh, throughout the day, you say, or just before the running? Yeah, well, perhaps maybe throughout the day, but also specifically if you eat something before or even after a run. Uh, before, I always prefer uh, having a fruit, more specifically banana, because that gives you an instant energy uh, to kickstart with your run. Along with that, I also make sure that I have like a coffee shot, like a bulletproof coffee with coconut oil in it, uh, which also improves the metabolism and makes sure that you are sustaining for that longer duration of the run. Uh, post, definitely, I love having hot chocolate. Uh, or probably any sort of a dark chocolate with milk, which takes care of my recovery aspect. And when we talk about the overall day nutrition, then there is a lot of uh, carbs which generally goes in, especially when I'm running or especially when I'm training for a particular run. So that's how uh, you know I basically make sure that I'm eating enough for the amount of training what I'm doing, along with it is sufficing or preparing me for my run. Nice. I like those snacks. Sounds delicious. How about favorite exercise hydration? Things that you like to drink before, or after, or during the run? Before, like I mentioned, uh, caffeine is something which I always uh, have, but that does not, uh, it's, it basically not count in the hydration. Uh, during, I prefer having natural. Uh, whether it can be lemon water, which is sweetened with, uh, you know, salt and baking soda, which takes care of the lactic acid buffering. So that is something which I go always when it comes to natural or I uh, switch it with coconut water. If not, then I am actually not promoting any brand over here, but I personally um, uh, consume these uh, supplements called as Fast Enough. So Fasten Up is a brand and they have a wide variety of supplements, uh, especially for endurance at least. So their hydration drink is uh, pretty much good because it has all the uh, sodium and electrolytes and the glucose required for an endurance at least. So that is something which I always keep on switching from one option to other option uh, during the run. Hmm. Very interesting. A lot to dive into in further detail as we get moving along here. Now, Shrey, yeah. how about uh, like perhaps a post-exercise meal or like a post-race meal if you were to do some kind of big running event? What do you like eating? What do you look forward to? Uh, pretty interesting question uh, because already you have lost so much of energy. So I definitely love having something which has potato or either sweet potato. It can be either in a mashed form or in India, there are variety of uh, preparations or recipes which you can make with any of these. So that's my go-to uh, meal option. And like I said, along with that, I also pref prefer having any of the egg uh, preparation or egg recipe. So it can be scrambled egg, it can be boiled eggs or omelette or any of the other uh, form of it. And I always prefer having maybe say a pineapple juice or pomegranate juice along with this particular meal uh, to take care of my recovery aspect as well. So these are the three primary things which I uh, have, especially after I'm done with my run or my training routine. Yeah, sounds nice. Good regimen you have there to keep you hydrated. Now, when yes. do you enjoy training the most? During the fall, winter, spring, or summertime? Well, I suppose out there in India. <laughs> um, I would say winters 
because uh, run season actually in india starts in winter so it's quite a fun to run in the cold climatic conditions uh, reason being that your hydration status is good uh, your body is able to manage the temperature at a much better rate as compared to in the other weather conditions and plus your recovery happens at a much faster rate the biggest advantage of training in winters is uh, the amount of training what you are doing your appetite also goes up so you have leverage of eating all possible options hmm Very fascinating. Okay, now Shrey, is there a certain time of day that you prefer training, getting out there for a run? I am definitely not a morning person. I get up only when I have the run or the event. But I always prefer training in the evenings because, uh, uh, you know, after the work, it's always have to. It's always good to have that endorphin rush, and plus, it gives me. better sleep it helps me in better recovery process and plus i'm all set to go the next day so it is actually pretty much beneficial but it is pretty i would say it is uh, person specific so i'm a kind of a person who is more adaptable to the evening routine as compared to the morning but it differs individual wise yeah that's very true you know i've always been much more of an early bird but since i've had my son almost 10 months old now I've yeah. had to train a lot more late at night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you like that for quite some time. Now, Shrey, kind of wrapping up here on our sprint round of questions. Thanks for answering those fun questions to get to know you just in a quick way. I'm wondering what percentage do you think nutrition plays in the success of ultra endurance athletes, specifically in our case ultra cyclists? you know perhaps if we're comparing that to the mental and physical preparation and execution what percentage do you think nutrition plays um so i i would like to give a range over here because uh, we can't really give a particular specific percentage uh, because cycling is an event or ultra cycling is an event wherein you need to be mentally and physically prepared as well you know so that's a major chunk of the percentage what goes in over there or uh, talking about nutrition somewhere i can say from uh, 40 to 60% of the uh, importance should go to nutrition because uh, to keep it very simple until unless you're not fueling well you're physically not well you're mentally not strong enough so if there is no food inside ultimately you will not be able to perform at your best so i can say somewhere between 40 to 60% should be the nutrition yeah. aspect i like that answer very true okay so getting into the nitty gritty and at the heart of nutrition then first i'd like to start with how you even got into the subject matter of nutrition what what got you into what got you interested what got you excited about it tell us a bit of your back story so uh, honestly there was uh, it, nutrition was not at all in the plan uh, and it was more like my father pushed me to uh, pursue this career and uh, initially it was something which i did not really enjoy because i am a kind of person who loves challenges and when i started with my sports nutrition uh, masters degree and when i started to know more about it it was something which created uh, interest and plus it helped me analyze it okay this is something which i want to do for my life so uh, i started with that and uh, uh, i think somewhere uh, down, a deep line uh, i understood that you know there is a lack of awareness when we talk about nutrition in general so in india this is one uh, you know critical area i would say wherein people have this preconceived notion that you know if you are on a diet or if you are following a nutrition regime you will have to restrict certain foods or you cannot have certain foods otherwise they are going to hamper your performance or hamper the uh, the goal what you want to achieve so uh, somewhere i was like no i want to change this notion i want to bring a change in this country and let everyone understand that no food is bad okay what goes wrong is the amount what you are having at the time at what you are having that particular food and the quantity that's all uh, what changes the entire story when you you are on a diet or when you have to do a lifestyle modification so that is something which also motivates me to keep going and keep educating more and more individuals whether they are athletes or general population uh, to start making 
and understanding that okay if you are on a diet there is nothing what you can stop eating okay all you need to understand is whether do my body need this if yes then when can i have it how much can i have it and for how long can i have it because if you stop particular food then ultimately in the long run you'll start craving for it and i think these were couple of things which ultimately helped me understand that no i need to be there for uh, my uh, people and educate them especially when these all aspects are considered or you know to create more and more awareness about this field mm yeah that's very fascinating and i think one of your slogans or the motto that you have along those lines creating healthy habits and not restrictions is that right yes Now it's very interesting so, to me. Now when you're talking about not having restrictions I'd imagine you're not talking about restricting like say a lot of processed foods like fast foods, McDonald's or whatever else. What what's popular there in India in the way of fast food? I would say everything. I mean whatever is there uh abroad uh, everything burgers and pizzas and sweets here people are more fond of sweets so all possible sweet preparation is something everyone is fond about so my concern is the same thing that i want to educate people to start understanding their body first uh, what does it require and why do they want to have it and even if they are on a nutrition plan i don't want them to stop eating a particular food whether it can be even if they want to have burger or even if they want to have pizza there are ways of doing it so you basically have to just look out for an alternative which is going to help you take care of your cravings take care of your once in a, a blue moon cheat meal even that's something which i allow to most of my clients so uh, i think that's the motto of my life that to understand to make every individual understand that you should not be able to if any point of time any person is telling you that no you can't eat so and so food or you shouldn't be eating this then probably you're doing injustice to what you're actually following so all you need to know is how your body is going to react to it that's that seems a very interesting subject matter and it makes me think of cycling or sports in general and being able to gauge how your body is feeling even on the right. physical the mental aspects and the more experience that you get as you experiment the better that you can understand what is going on with your body how it's reacting to the environment in this case it being food liquid nutrition so it's all very fascinating now to give folks a context of who you work with you've spanned the range from rowing to cricket to fencing You've worked with Olympians, Ironman triathletes, and national and international athletes as well. You've also worked with Arjuna Awardee winners. Tell me about that. <laughs> Actually, there were a few of my clients who uh, were uh, some of them were rowers, some of them were long distance runners uh, uh, or sprinters, I would say, and. Uh, uh i think one or two of them were para olympic athletes so uh i basically helped them to uh, complete either it was an olympic event or it either it was an asian game championship uh, and because of that uh, they were felicitated the arjuna award winner uh, as you know excelling in their particular sport so i basically helped them to understand especially when they are traveling in other countries what kind of food is going to help them achieve their goal and plus make sure that it is not messing up with their body because when you travel that's the biggest challenge or which comes in front of you is what to eat and whether it is going to benefit your body or not so that that's that's about it like that's how i basically help them mm, yeah that's that's mean and i will want to get into the whole process that you go through with your athletes but before then turning back to again the wonderful photographs that we have but also for folks who'd like to get connected they could visit your website spare eat nutrition if they go to shreyaadav.com they could see all kinds of cool stuff on there very well done website thank you and it seems like there's a lot of resources there for folks to check out even just on the website and i see here in this section the topic of ultra endurance nutrition is very fascinating and also 
people can follow you on Instagram and on Facebook, of course, both with your company and also yourself personally. So Shreya, you've been at it for quite some time, but you also do have a master's degree in nutrition. So I'd like to kind of get to some nutritional basics for those who may be clueless. It may seem like something obvious for somebody to know about. And perhaps athletes, they may hear from one athlete or a friend or a family member a variety of things, but they don't really know the fundamentals. So I'd kind of like to just understand from you, what are the basics of nutrition? Perhaps we could start with like macronutrients and micronutrients and things like that. Sure. Uh, so talking about the basics, uh, so like I initially also said, no food is bad, okay? Because every food has some or the other nutrient, whether it can be a macronutrient or whether it can be a micronutrient. So to be a little more elaborative about it, macronutrients are the nutrients which basically gives you energy uh, in a much higher quantities as compared to your micronutrients. So the macros are basically divided or uh, known as your carbohydrate, proteins and fats. Okay, carbohydrates are then uh, divided into complex and simple carbohydrates. So simples are the one which basically your body can digest at a much faster rate because they do not have uh, enough of fiber in it. Versus if you talk about complex carbohydrates, they are the one which are filled with uh, fiber and that gives you prolonged energy and plus your body is able to digest them at a much slower rate as compared to uh, 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 the simple carbs. Okay, the example of this is potato and sweet potato. So potato is basically a simple carb versus sweet potato is something which is which has complex carbohydrates and that gives you a sustained source of energy and even sustained source of glucose because your body is taking its own good time to digest it. Mm. Talking about proteins, proteins are the building blocks of our body. And uh, in India, most of the people are protein deficit because Throughout the day, there's not much of a food intake, what is going inside when we talk about protein, wherein protein is actually essential for most of the processes that are happening inside. When we talk about the metabolism, when we talk about the muscle repair and growth, talking from a kid's point of view or an athlete or an adult, it is essential part of your daily diet. Okay. So, uh, Protein has another uh, aspects to it. Those are basically amino acids. So you might have heard that, you know, athletes are taking branch chain amino acids, BCAAs or glutamine or any of those sort. Uh, they are basically helping you in the muscle recovery process. And plus they also take care of the fat metabolism uh, and making sure that the fat, which is there inside the body, it is actually helping you for your event. So you have to understand, uh, and it is pretty much sport specific that which kind of fuel is getting used as a source of energy. Talking about fats, fats is something which not many people like because people think that fat makes them fat. So uh, I would say all you need to understand is how to replace the unhealthy fat versus the healthy fats. So uh, in the fat section, there are also something called a saturated and unsaturated fat. So the saturated are the ones which we always call or, you know, to name it like an unhealthy fat, which comes in from your butter and ghee and margarine and all those kind of foods, which ultimately does not help in attaining your goals. And plus also uh, makes you a little bit uh, higher when, when you talk about weight. Versus talking about the unsaturated or the healthy ones, they are also your MUFA and PUFA, mono unsaturated and poly unsaturated fatty acids. Uh, they are the ones, in simple terms, to call them, they are omega 3, omega 3 and omega 6, which are very much essential when you talk about your skin health, your hair health, recovery process, reducing the oxidative stress, especially in athletes' case. Omega 3 is one of the uh, very good fats which are actually helping you even lower the cholesterol levels. So the simplest sources can be your fish, olive oil, or even nuts, seeds. These are the easiest option which a person can go in for when we talk about uh, fats. So these are the macros. Let's let's ask a couple questions about the macronutrients. So thanks for sure. that. 
whirlwind tour of them. So again, to recap, carbs, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Now, again, like you said, it does require some education to distinguish even within a certain macronutrient class, what may be considered good versus bad or better versus worse. When it comes to carbohydrates, something that comes up, you gave a great example, you know, of, you know, one being able to be metabolized faster than another. And so that also relates to the glycemic index, right? Yes. Yes. Tell us a bit about that. So uh, basically talking about the glycemic index, every food has a different glycemic index. So uh, to simplify it, the foods that are rich in carbohydrates, basically depending on how much amount of fiber it has and how much amount of the micronutrient it has, uh, the glycemic index is dependent on that, number one. And secondly, the glycemic index is also being uh, judged or noted depending on how well the food is getting absorbed and how faster the blood glucose level goes up, faster or lower or at a moderate level. So that's what the glycemic index is all about. And like I said, every food, whichever has carbohydrates, so depending on how many carbohydrates it has or what kind of carbohydrates it has, whether it's simple or complex, the glycemic index keeps on uh, changing. Okay, so versus if you talk like what example I gave, uh, sweet potato versus potato. So potato is something which will fall under a high glycemic index food versus sweet potato will come under moderate to low, I wouldn't say low, but moderate uh, glycemic index food, considering the amount of starch and carbohydrate it has. So, and every food has a different glycemic index. So an individual should always keep a balance between both so that there is no sudden rush of glucose in the blood, uh, which is either affecting your metabolism or your performance. Right. So when you're talking about glucose rushing into the blood, for us lay people, we know the term blood sugar level, perhaps. And so that's important for a variety of factors. I'm sure for performance reasons for athletes, but also when it comes to perhaps things like diabetes, right? Yes. Now, very interesting. I just quickly did a a Google search and I found this great article, Harvard Medical School, talking about the glycemic index for certain foods. And I thought it'd be informative to show people what that means. So is it true that a higher number than is... Uh, means that it goes into the bl- uh, blood faster? It gets absorbed faster. Okay. Right. And so I'm kind of remembering, the only reason I can even talk intelligently about this is because my brother has also studied similar subjects. And so I see here wow. in the glycemic index, we're talking about 100, which I guess is the standard that you're using to benchmark all of the other items. And that's talking about just straight glucose, right? Like if you were right. to just drink a bottle of glucose, it would be 100. Right. So we're comparing everything relative to that. So I see, Correct. for example, white wheat bread, it's pretty high up there, 75 out of, say, compared to 100. If we go down, though, something like barley looks like it's 28. So that means it's low on the index, right? So that means it works much more slowly. And that would be because barley has a lot more fiber in it, right? Fiber, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, breakfast cereals for those who love breakfast. So let's see if we're talking about rolled oats. Looks like it's right in the middle range. So it will fall under the moderate uh, glycemic index. Mm, Okay. But it looks like cornflakes doesn't look too good there on the index. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cornflakes are not really a good option. <laughs> okay, so now if we're talking about fruits and fruit products, so you mentioned pineapple. So that looks like about the moderate range then as well, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm. Oh, and I am banana. not sure if they have banana over there. Mm, um, banana, here it is. 51? 51. So yeah, okay. even that, that should be good. And surprising to me, mango here, it's 51. I know mango has a lot of sugar in it, but I guess there's also right. fiber then. Fiber, yes, yes. Okay. So it's always encouraged to have mango as a fruit versus having it in a juice form. Mm. Oh, you bring up a good subject matter there. Something mm-hmm. that I've kind of thought about myself in the recent years. Would you say it is true that if you were to have something like a smoothie, 
that you would consider that a processed food? No, not really. Hmm. Now, I had this interesting thought. The reason why I thought I considered it a process is because if you blend up, say, the fruit, like you were just saying, mm-hmm. you break down all the fibers. So although you may be getting similar macronutrients, the absorption of it is going to be much faster. And so I think of something like a soda, like Coca-Cola or whatever mm-hmm. your favorite soda might be. And really, one of the main reasons it's bad It's not necessarily because there's a lot of sugar in it, but also because it is just in its pure form, really. And you're just, it's going to absorb very quickly, right? So then that leads to a very high spike in blood sugar levels. So the reason why, in my mind, I thought of it that way, perhaps it's not the correct technical term. I'm not a nutritionist, but I like it that way because, you know, smoothies are very popular. I think probably also with athletes as well. But people may not be aware of that distinction. So what brought that to my mind was when you said it's better to have the mango in the whole food form with all the fibers intact versus in a juice form, right? Right, right. The solution for it is if in case you have that thing in your mind that, you know, smoothies are as good as having a soda or something uh what you can probably do is add maybe one or two uh, tablespoons of any of your breakfast cereal to the smoothie which Mm. is going to increase the fiber content and which is going to make sure that there is enough for uh even if yes i understand when we uh crush or whenever we are processing the smoothie the fruit fiber is something which gets crushed along with it but ultimately if you're adding so it's all about you know replacing or probably adding something little extra which is going to balance it out and when we talk about the coke or sodas along with the sugar it is empty calories which i want to you know share with everyone there is no nutritional value to it uh, there is no macros or any micronutrients along with it so it's something which you are doing just to you know probably enjoy yourself with mm-hmm. yeah that is very true and a lot of foods tend to be that way in this day and age now fortunately perhaps you know there are ways to supplement a food even a processed one that you may pick up at the local grocery store you know they may supplement it with calcium or some other uh, micronutrient which reminds me you know it, back in the day when i was in university i would drink a lot of smoothies and my mother had given me a whole bottle of i think it was like fiber it was like a, almost like a powder and i would put that in my smoothies as well so perhaps that is also an option Although I'm sure it's much more expensive than just putting in your breakfast cereal. So I like that idea. I never heard of that before. Exactly. Because I also suggested to most of my athletes is to roast uh, the oats and make powder of it. So it's pretty much easier for you to just add one or two scoops of it to your smoothie or to even if milkshakes if you want to have. And it's taking care of almost every aspect of your smoothie. Mm, I love that. You're talking about that and making me drool a little bit here, Shreya. I like the cover photo that you had on your Facebook. Some really delicious looking meals there. Got some avocados with some healthier fats and all kinds of goodies. Now, I also did want to talk a little bit about, you know, some of these other um, glycemic index foods here. Mm-hmm. You were talking about like potatoes, for example, and so for people to check that out. And of course, anybody can just Google this and learn about it themselves. And so potatoes, it's pretty high in the glycemic index, but we could tell you that it looks like a boiled potato versus an instant mashed potato. You could see there's quite a difference. Then you could see carrots. It's very low on the index. Sweet potato there is lower 63 versus 78 for the normal potato. You were talking about that. Interesting. Yeah. We talked about milk, full fat, Wow, that's surprising. It's very low on the glycemic index. I think we're going to have to do a trivia round with our future <laughs> guests, and we'll see how close everyone can get. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll give you a test. I don't know if you saw it yet. It's okay. Don't worry if you cheated. Where is, let's see, what's a good one here? Okay, orange juice. Give me a number on the glycemic index. <laughs> orange juice. Somewhere between 60 to 70, close to that. Okay, pretty close, pretty close. Looks like it's 50. 
Okay. The ballpark. All right. The ballpark. So these values, actually, one thing which I want to point out is, uh, these values differ uh, country-wise because the production, the kind of food which you're getting, is also different. So there is no set or like for Indian foods, there is a different glycemic value, but it is pretty much closer to what uh, what we are showing. Right, right, right. And I think that you bring up an important um, distinction, though, that within nutrition, and especially if you're buying something that isn't like a whole food, plant-based type of thing, you know, something you just find in nature, you pick it off the out the ground and you eat it. You know, a lot of the food we eat in this day and age is processed in some form or another. And so it is important to have an understanding of what we're looking at at the grocery store and what we're putting in our mouths. Now, we talked about the carbohydrates and the glycemic index, and that's all very interesting. Then you talked about proteins. Now, I think that's probably one of the, well, I would say one of the bigger um, subject matters for athletes. They always talk about protein, how much protein you need, and you need to make sure you get so much protein at a certain time. But I guess also in, in recent years, you know, high-fat diets have become quite popular too, but we'll cross that bridge next. When it comes to protein, what is the optimal amount of protein that one requires and at what timing before, during, or after an exercise or training? Okay, so uh, if you consider a normal individual for the Indian Indians, it's 0.8 to 1 gram per kg body weight. If you are an individual who is doing moderate uh, kind of an uh, activity or moderate intensity of training uh, for any of the sports you are into, the range can go up somewhere between uh, 1 to 1.2 to maximum 1.3 grams per kg body weight. If you are in high endurance athletes, then definitely the level goes to somewhere around 1.5 to 1.8 grams per kg body weight. But 2 grams is something which is the upper limit and most of the time it's not suggested to endurance athletes because depending on the sporting requirements, uh, anything above and beyond 2 grams per kg body weight is being suggested to power athletes. Okay, so that would be the ideal recommendation. Talking about the timings, before the training, you can definitely have a moderate protein snack, uh, which is basically high carb and moderate protein snack. And after you definitely need, like it's almost most of the time it's said that you need protein. But one important point I would like to highlight over here is if you have protein post your training session and if you do not have a carbohydrate source with it, ultimately the protein absorption in the muscle is hampered affecting your recovery process, affecting your muscle regeneration and the recovery process. So if you are having like a one scoop or maybe say 25 to 30 grams of protein post your training session, make sure you have a carbohydrate rich food, either it can be a fruit or dried fruits or maybe like how we are talking like maybe a smoothie hmm. to make sure that you're taking care of the carbohydrate aspect as well. Hmm. Yeah, that all makes good sense. Now, so when you were talking about the upper limit for protein intake and the protein numbers, you said up to uh, two grams per kilogram of weight. Is that per day? Is that like a daily value of protein? Yes, yes, per day. But that, like I said, two grams is the upper limit. You know, it is pretty much individualistic. So for someone who is an ultra endurance athlete, uh, uh, two grams is something which I would recommend to them when they are participating or when they are doing a RAM or any of the ultra cycling event. Okay, but not on a regular day basis. I think I will stick to somewhere around 1.4 to 1.8 grams per kg body weight, depending for how many hours they are training. Now, what is the limiting factor there on the upper limit that you suggest, say, two, two grams per kilogram of weight? Is it metabolism? Is it just the body can't process any more than that? Uh, definitely your body can process it. But the only concern is whatever is extra, our body is designed in such a way that whatever is extra, it tends to get stored. So we have to consider that aspect as well. Secondly, with protein, one uh, issue is that we should be able to take care of your hydration status so that whatever protein you're having throughout the day, it's not affecting your kidney function. So if you're 
having even, even if 1.5 to 1.8 or 2 grams of whatever amount of uh, protein in a day you should be able to have enough of hydration or water throughout the day so that it is helping uh, you attain your goal and plus make sure that your kidneys are in good health hmm interesting what is the relation between protein and your kidneys so uh, basically whatever excess of protein is there which does not get metabolized or probably which does not get absorbed in the body is flushed out via urine or via your excretion and if at that particular time if or probably if your hydration is not good then ultimately it tends to get stored and keep you know build into small particles or molecules so that's something uh, what happens and your kidneys are basically responsible to even take care of the electrolyte balance so if your uh, you know kidneys are not able to function to its potential just because the protein intake is on the higher side that is also one uh, another reason why you know there is a good amount of connection between both of them and protein compared to carbohydrates are much more heavier to digest and uh, get metabolized in the body so that is also another reason Mm, that's very fascinating, Shreya. You are very you. experienced, and I'm learning a lot here myself. So, just to um, refresh my memory, the kidneys produce urine, right? Okay. And so, what you're essentially saying is that certain foods are harder, perhaps, or heavier. to metabolize or to just go through your whole body and that takes a toll on different organs within your body because it requires yes. it to work more or less right yes yes okay so over time that can have effect especially if you're doing say something like the race across america up to 12 days that's the time limit if you're eating that much every single day and i'm not sure what the average ram racer is eating but say upwards of 2 10000 calories that's a lot of food to process so being exactly. mindful of that i'd imagine would make or break even somebody and how they're feeling what would happen if they ate too much protein and say even in just a duration of you know several days up to 12 days and they were having say perhaps call it an imbalance or a disproportionate amount of protein versus say the carbohydrates and the fats what symptoms may someone feel or notice uh i would say definitely there would be uh, the energy what is required for a race like ram okay you need to have a constant source of glucose that is coming in whether it is in the simple form whether it is like a fast absorbing glucose or a you know slow absorbing glucose or a gradual source of energy so protein is something which i would consider to give only for the recovery process if a person is taking a higher amount of protein their body is going to take good amount of time to digest it and if your body is going to digest it at a much slower rate you will not have that sort of an energy to perform for those 12 days of duration and like you said there is good amount of like you know 10000 calories which are required to have uh, per day when you're cycling for those many hours or those many kilometers so protein is just going to make you slower uh it might give you a little bit discomfort when you talk about digestion when you talk about any sort of a indigestion issue or maybe bloating or anything of that sort so uh it the simple thing is it will not give you the instant energy what the sport is required uh to have so that's something which might happen if you are going little overboard with the protein uh intake Right, right. That's a good subject matter, actually. And we were talking about it earlier: glycemic index. We're talking about potatoes versus sweet potatoes. You know, complex carbs versus simple ones. And that's always been fascinating for me because, kind of like as you started in the beginning, it's not necessary that one thing is bad, and one thing is better. But it's when you apply something and knowing when and how much to consume a particular, in this case, a macronutrient. So I have always thought of it this way. that perhaps if i was just going into the office today and i was just going to be sitting in front of my computer it would be better to have consumed a complex carbs for breakfast because essentially the energy will trickle out leading me to say lunchtime whereas if i right. were to have frosted flakes for example 
the nutrition would come out like a floodgate. And then of course you get the spike in blood sugar levels, right? But then the timing is poor because you don't need all of that energy, you know, very quickly. You're just sitting there, you're not, you know, exercising, you're not racing. So that's true maybe of everyday office life, nine to five. But when you're doing a race, like you were just saying, you need the energy immediately because you're constantly racing, especially if you're going for hours on end. So really, it seems like the simple carbohydrates would be the best way to go in terms of getting energy quickly. And compare that, like you were saying, to protein, it, it, it gets converted into energy much more slowly. And so when we talk about like red meats, for example, you know, I think it's common knowledge that if you eat it, you always kind of feel like it's pretty heavy and it sits there for a little while. So I think it's all making sense now. Thanks for giving us a context so we can better understand these things for our own lives and also for our sports. One last thing that I wanted to ask related to protein before we move on to the popular topic of fats. When it comes to recovery, you mentioned the number about 25 to 30 grams of protein. And that is like kind of an optimal amount, not too much, not too little to aid in the recovery process after a workout. And so would you say it's true? That's why most uh, products, you know, sports related products like a protein bar or protein shake, that's why they typically have around 20 to 30 grams of protein in them, right? Yes. For sure, because your body can absorb that much amount of protein at one point of time. Whether it can be post-training, whether it can be in a particular meal, whether it's your breakfast, lunch or dinner, that's much, That's how much your body can take at one go. Right. Now, when you say at one go, you mean like within an hour, like an hourly rate of metabolism for protein? Uh, see, whatever food you eat, it basically gets digested in one and a half hours whatever food you eat. So it gets uh, pushed into your intestine for the absorption and for the metabolism process. Okay, so every food that is the window period, I would say, whether you're having a protein or a carb or a mix of all of them. And generally, it's most of the time, it's a mix of all of them. So one and a half hours is something which I can say, but talking about the absorption part, definitely three hours, three to four hours, including both the process is something which I would uh, like to share. Mm, very informative. Thanks for sharing that, Shreya. Now, moving on to the subject of fats. It's become a very popular topic, I don't know, maybe the last decade. People may be familiar with things like the keto diet, and perhaps even on the other end of the spectrum, something like a vegan diet. Now, my understanding is that no matter what diet you ascribe to, there is a healthy way to go about it and an unhealthy way to go about it. And, you know, for example, a lot of vegan products, although they may be plant-based, they may also, to compensate for flavor or texture or things along those lines, have a lot more fat in them. Now, they may be unsaturated versions. But specifically, I suppose, the keto diet is most relevant when we talk about a high-fat diet. Tell me a bit about that and how people in general, but also athletes, should approach a diet like that, which is high fat, knowing that there are healthy unsaturated fats and unhealthy saturated fats. Okay. So keto, like you uh, said, that it is pretty much trending these days when, uh, when we talk about in general population and even in athletes for that matter, because I've personally seen a couple of athletes following a keto diet and doing ramps. So um, talking about ketogenic diet, uh, to simplify it for you, is uh, the proportion of carbohydrates that a regular person eats in a normal diet. That is basically switched with fat. So for example, out of 100%, if we consider 60 to 65% of carbohydrates coming in from the food or coming in from the calories, remaining 20 to 25 from the protein and 10 to 15% from the fat, the ratio is basically shifted altogether. So 60 to 70%, I would say 80%, not even 60 to 70%, uh, 80% of the calories from a keto diet comes from fat. Remaining 10% is protein, 10 to 15, I can say. And remaining 10% is from the carbohydrates. Basically, what happens is when you are following a ketogenic diet, uh, the 
end product of your fat metabolism is ketones so your fat stores are getting used as a source of energy for your metabolism for your daily routine activities what you're doing which was a work of carbohydrates before okay uh talking about general population yes you can follow it i'm not saying it's something bad uh, but one thing always a individual need to understand is ketogenic diet was basically designed for people who had epilepsy or who used to get seizures and any other symptoms uh, when we talk about epilepsy because a uh, ketogenic diet showed a good amount of improvement in their symptoms when uh, the carb ratio was shifted to fat uh, it doesn't mean that a normal individual cannot follow it you have to always keep one thing in mind whether can i do ketogenic diet or any sort of diet for that matter whether it's vegan keto intermittent fasting or anything of that sort can i do it for my life because if you follow it for certain months just to take care of your goals just to attain your goals and if you want to bounce back or if you want to go back to your normal routine how are you going to do it and whether your body is feel body will be able to cope up with it or not because most of the time what i have seen is people following ketogenic diet or any sort of a different diet for months uh, getting back in shape and then going back to the normal diet and then everything is reversed they are putting on the weight back they are you know they are affecting their metabolism so i always recommend to not give any sort of a shock to your body because it is designed in a particular manner it is designed uh, for the food to absorb in a particular manner or to metabolize in a particular manner okay even in athletes case uh, when we talk about ultra endurance or any endurance athlete it's something which i would not recommend because there are not much of research which is done when we talk about ketogenic diet for endurance athletes so we need to have a scientific backup that how it is helping you perform well because ultimately when we talk about endurance there is a good amount like we or we are discussing now also that there is good amount of carbohydrate intake which is required for you to give that constant energy especially when you're doing it for long hours or uh, versus uh, even if fat is a faster source of energy or it gives you quick energy uh, you know or it gives you uh, energy to sustain for longer duration but the problem is for how long you can do that and for that you need to have enough of stores uh, to keep you sustained for that duration so if for a long event or for an ultra endurance event if there are not enough of fat stores ultimately you will start losing muscle mass and that's going to affect your performance that's going to affect your recovery process and even your body composition for that matter so uh, it's something which you have to always read up upon see and analyze whether your body is going to take that up or how it is going to respond to these kind of diets and then only take a call mm. fascinating you touched on a variety of interesting subjects there and i think one of the most important one that we can all take away is that you have to know what you're doing and you can't just read about something or see someone else you know subscribing to some kind of diet and then try to fit it into your own life you have to understand why somebody's doing it and also how to go about it as we were talking about even if you were to use a ketogenic diet you know there is a healthy way to do it and an unhealthy way to do it i mean you could eat well i would say mcdonald's but there's a lot of carbohydrates in that as well but you could eat a lot of fatty foods like saturated fats you know uh, pork bacon for example and you can definitely get a high percentage of fat in your diet but then there'll be other effects so it's like when you remove one thing and add another thing things do change you don't just get everything for free all the all these benefits that you might think of and i think that's what i get from you know hearing you talk about not just a high fat diet but nutrition in general and yes. it is true you know i've talked with my brother again i always kind of mention him he's a mysterious figure and one day i'll have him on the show and then people will know that i'm not making him up he's not a mythical figure but i have talked with him even just recently about the keto diet we've had a very elite coach on the show who does believe in the keto diet but i found he has a very a much more balanced approach than the average person especially athlete or lay person 
because he does a periodize or periodization of his nutrition. So when they're doing higher intensity exercise, they're using much more carbohydrates, but then outside of that, they're using uh, higher fats in their diet. And so I was very curious and I asked my brother about it and he shared a lot about it, you know, the latest research. And I think he's blogged several times about the subject matter he's very interested in as well. And like you were saying, I think the research is mostly inconclusive when it comes to any real performance um, gains that you can get from being uh, ketogenic and, and having a higher fat diet. Of course, the popular thing for ultra endurance athletes is thinking about, okay, fat has a much higher energy density in it, uh, you know, per kilogram compared to car uh, carbohydrates, especially protein. But the problem is obviously, you know, you're having to store a lot more of that. Not only is weight a factor, but then also when it comes to essentially metabolizing uh, the fat and how that can affect your performance in real time, whether you're going to the extremes, you know, your VO2 max, or even at the slower intensities. So I think it's very important to work with somebody like you if you know, an athlete like myself or an athlete like any of the viewers are interested in one diet or another, it would, you know, be beneficial to receive some advice from an expert nutritionist like you to confirm, you know, any assumptions that they may be making or explain to them why they're missing something, right? Yeah. Now, with sure. the athletes that you've worked with, do any of them typically come to you uh, with the belief that they do want to follow a certain uh, diet and a certain nutritional plan? Or do they come to you, you know, looking for your recommendation and then they just really switch to it? How does that kind of work? <laughs> so, uh, yes, definitely every individual has an idea that if they're doing a particular event or if they're into any uh, sport, they want to achieve so and so things, whether it's their recovery process, whether it's the injury prevention, whether it's the energy levels or the onset of fatigue and so on. Uh, things are planned. But ultimately, it's my job for them to understand that, okay, even if you want these all things, but it can be only taken care of with the right eating, with the right strategy. So there's a lot of brainstorming that happens between me and my clients, especially when they are doing any sort of an event or when they're into any sort of a sport. It's, my job is to first understand what they're looking for and see a particular aspect or a strategy which can actually help them attain that particular goal. So there is, there is a set procedure for all the uh, things which I practice or I do, uh, especially when an athlete comes to me. So there's a blood check, which is done to understand the blood chemistry and the biochemical parameters. There's a in detail body composition, which is done to understand the body fat to versus muscle ratio versus bone ratio or the body water content for me to know that, okay, as per their sport, these should be the values and what are their values. So if you have a comparative figure, then it becomes much more easier for me to plan their nutrition. Then there is a in detail counseling goes uh, in which basically ask about certain symptoms if their body is trying to tell them or, you know, uh, you basically make them understand that why this thing is happening because probably you're going somewhere, uh, you know, a little bit off when we talk about the food or the diet or nutrition or any of the strategies. So symptoms are something which I always consider when we talk about an athlete or their counseling. And then a detailed recall or considering what all foods they love, what all foods they don't like. Because if there is a little bit chance for me to add the food, what they love in their diet, it's like a win-win situation for both of us. So, and then we move on to something called as the recall. And in recall, there is, I consider how many hours they're training, what is the intensity of the training, uh, what kind of workout they're doing, whether it's the strength training or running or endurance or anything of that sort. And based on that, there is an exclusive, like a proper weekly nutrition plan, which is given uh, with lots of variety of foods, uh, because I don't like uh, giving my athletes or my clients the same food to eat every day. And uh, if required, then I also suggest them to do uh, genetic testing for me to understand uh, the internal aspects of the body apart from the biochemistry. 
and uh, there's a supplement uh, you know supplements are also something which i suggest depending on what sport they are into depending whether it's safe or not because uh, in current situation it's also important to understand uh, whether which supplement is good for you from the wide range of supplements which are available in the market so this is how basically i uh, work with most of my athletes and my clients yeah that's incredible it sounds very comprehensive and it seems like there's something for everyone to benefit from that even if they were just trying to explore or set a baseline get an understanding of how things work i know in just this episode alone i've already learned a lot and there's a lot of food for thought pun intended and so i hope that folks at home could take this knowledge with them and apply it to their own lives and of course reach out to you if there's any more specific questions now there are some other nice photos that you sent and I do want to go over them before we continue on. Of course, here's a very nice photo of you. Shreya Thank you. herself. Nutrition, uh, science and food technology. This was a conference, right? This was a conference in Rome and I was moderating the conference. That must be so cool. Was this the same conference? No, uh, this is an event in which I was awarded as most influential food industry professional uh, which happened in Mumbai. Wow, congratulations. And I was one of the uh, speakers as well, like one of the panelists uh, and talk about nutrition aspect in general. Wow. So we're definitely speaking with somebody who knows her stuff. How about this? And this was uh, my first award, most influential uh, among 51 women. I was one of the most influential women uh, in the industry uh, and in North Maharashtra. And in my city too. So you can see the Margin brothers also over there. I was felicitated by them. Ah, yes, yes. I see. Okay. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Small, small world. Yes. That's Actually, cool. we are from the same city. Oh, okay. Oh, makes sense yeah. now. All right. So something uh, in water over there. <laughs> yes. This is a U Mumba Pro Kabaddi League team. So they had come down to Nasik. They were training actually over here. And then I happened to uh, meet them and talk to them. Oh, cool. Now, what, what sport was this? Kabaddi. Oh, what is that? Uh, <laughs> how should I explain this now? Um, it's more like a tackle sport, I would say. Um, something like boxing, I would say, but not like exactly boxing. It is most of the time are done probably in a mud or on a mat. Uh, but the technique and everything is altogether different. But just to give you a simple idea, it's close to boxing. That's what I would suggest. Mm, okay. I did a quick Google search here. Kabaddi. Yeah. Popular sport in Indian subcontinent. Okay. So here's some photos. Let's take a look. Ah, huh, fascinating. Geez, it looks yeah. like a big old wrestling match, but with tons yes. of fun there at one time. Wow. Look yeah. at that. It looks like a... Uh, karate kick. There's a lot of kicking and there's a midline uh, between two teams. So basically they have to cross it uh, without touching the other opponent. Oh. It's a very fascinating game. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to check that out. Pretty cool. So you were saying that some of these folks are uh, Kabaddi athletes. Players, yes, yes. They're Kabaddi athletes. Okay, very cool. Okay, now what do we have here? Um, there's an academy called as Corvus in Mumbai and they basically have a lot of sports uh, and they are calling coaches from abroad and they are educating athletes over here and they have a particular camp uh, happening at a particular time of the year. So I had actually uh, given a session for their basketball champions. Okay. Very cool. Okay. All right, looks like a nice Zoom call here. A lot of people. Zoom call. Here. Yes. Uh, this is one of the best experiences I've had uh, last year, and I'm enjoying it till date because I'm still associated with those people. Uh, so, if you know, I'm not sure if you know Deepika Padukone, mm -mm. actress, Indian actress. No, I don't. Tell me all about her. <laughs> okay, she's the most hottest and beautiful uh, actress here, and her father is an international and a national badminton player. So he owns wow. a badminton academy here in India. And I happened to get associated with them and I had actually done a nutrition program for their coaches. So I did one for their coaches, one for their students. And next week I have one more for their coaches. 
Oh, that's pretty neat. So you're involved with a lot. So it's very nice to have you on the show. Quite the honor. Now, in this image, I see in the chat, folks are asking about turmeric powder. I particularly love turmeric in a different mm. texture within my oatmeal, but also even just with the milk. Tell me about how you prepare that and what are some of the benefits of turmeric? So turmeric is one of the most renowned uh, herb, I can say globally, not only in India. Mm. The best part is its origin is in India, which makes us pretty much proud about it. Uh, but turmeric is antifungal, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, uh, and all, all I would say. It has lots and lots of benefits. The only concern or the only thing which most of the people are not aware about is when you're having turmeric either mixed in a milk or a smoothie or in your preparations, the best thing to add along with that is black pepper. Hmm. Because black pepper is rich in pepperine and turmeric is rich in curcumin. So when you combine both of them, the absorption of curcumin happens at much faster rate compared to ha compared to what you know of having it alone so if you add any sort of maybe a, a black pepper powder or probably like small small black peppers to your preparations or even to the milk or smoothies what you are preparing then definitely it enhances the absorption at a much faster rate mm, fascinating i love the subject matter because there is so many details there in the one hand, it's exciting because it shows that there's ways for you to be able to extract more value from your daily nutrition to optimize your performance. And there's so many knobs to turn and levers to pull. But at the same time, it could also be intimidating because there's so much to navigate. But I think on the one hand, fortunately, there are people like you who are experts in this field. But also on the other hand, like you were saying, because you, you're, one of your goals is really to try to make, and I guess for any nutritionist, to make all of these complex ideas and concepts, uh, make it practical for everyday people to be able to understand and apply to their life and for you to be able to provide that expert counseling. And I think that's why it is important to work with somebody like yourself, especially if somebody is trying to do something extreme where you're pushing your bodies to the limit. It seems like knowing how one thing may complement another to increase the absorption rate or, you know, the potency or some kind of benefit with it. It sounds like there's a lot of value in knowing some of these details. Now, something interesting I saw here, somebody asked, what about ORS? O -R -S, what is that? So ORS is a drink which is basically given, uh, especially when you're dehydrated or when you're getting uh, diarrhea. Hmm. Okay, if you've eaten something and you've got a diarrhea, uh, so it's a basically electrolyte solution, uh, which is given to uh, take care of either dehydration or diarrhea. Uh, but that's something which I would not recommend to an athlete because it has only electrolytes. When we talk about athletes, they do need glucose along with the electrolytes, especially to replace uh, the electrolyte loss uh, via, you know, sweat or via urine, especially when they're training. So ORS is something which is, uh, you know, most of the people try and ask whether can we have it like a sports drink or can we just add it to the water and have it in between the training session? Uh, interesting. Yeah, it reminds me, I know there are a lot of, well, people call them salt tablets, but really I think a lot of them are electrolyte tablets. Is that similar, except just in a pill form? Uh, I would say salt will have more of a sodium content compared to the potassium, but this one has a balance of both. But this and the, another part is this comes in a powder form. Okay, fascinating. We'll have to have you back in. Well, look, I'm also just a nerd when it comes to this stuff. I love it. Also, like I said, my brother, he's similar field and I always ask a million questions as you can imagine. And, uh, but I think it is also very beneficial to the viewers. So I'll continue. So it's good to learn. <laughs> All right. Looks like another award. One of your million awards that you've received. <laughs> Tell me about this one. Yes. Same thing, the panel discussion which happened, like the initial picture, this was the award function. So that was the panel discussion and this was when I actually received an award. All right, very cool. All right, now what are we looking at? 
so uh, if you know uh, in india the first person to complete iron man was milin soman i'm not re- i'm really not sure if you have heard his name so he's an actor he's an ultra endurance athlete runner um, triathlete uh, and uh, she is his mom and i happened to meet her for one of the events which he organized it's called as pinkathon and it's exclusively for women to uh, start some sort of a physical activity whether it's running or walking so it's more of a fun uh, kind of a run and i happened to run with her and uh, take a picture with her so it was a great privilege and a blessing to meet her Oh, no. and she is the only woman in india i think her age is 80 or more if i'm not wrong who can actually run in a sari and she can actually do push ups in sari so she is one of the inspirational women in india for sure that's so awesome now yeah. sorry for those of us who don't know what that is explain that um so uh, in india if you know that there is a particular uh, kind of i would say dressing pattern uh, in which most of the time it, females are tend to uh, wear a sari especially for a occasion or on a daily routine basis so she is the one who does the so most of the time when we do any sort of physical activity we like to be in our comfortable clothes right wherein sari is a kind of an outfit in which uh, females or any individual can't really do uh, different sorts of activities so she is the one who has uh, basically broken the record and uh, given all of us an inspiration to do what you want to do no matter what outfit you are into right so it is a a garment Yes. Usually very colorful, very beautiful. Definitely not for extreme sports or, quite frankly, any sport. But looks nice for a special occasion. Yes. So you're saying she has broken some records in that? That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty inspirational. So, what are you going to be doing in a sari? <laughs> I can't handle it. American? I'm really not sure what I can do with it. Really not sure. Yeah, that'd be great to have a maybe a relay team, a women's relay team in the race across America, and you're all wearing the saris. <laughs> probably, probably we can be a part of the team cheering our athlete that okay, you can do it, you can do it with just a little Indian touch in US. Yeah, uh, that'd be really cool. Yeah. Okay, so meeting all kinds of amazing people, and I just love all that is happening when it comes to sports and especially ultra endurance cycling in India. so much developing everyone there is doing something right and of course we saw this photo earlier Bharat Padmu yes. he'll be on the show as well a uh, famous ultra endurance cyclist very accomplished of course you're very accomplished yourself that's why you're on the same stage with him and all the others okay what what do we have here this was just an appreciation from them to be one of the panelists uh, and to you know share my expertise with all of the future cyclists of our country this is appreciation or a momentum i would say now i love the backdrop there what is that like it's like a leopard on a bicycle <laughs> yes 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 it was a cycling summit which is like a gathering in which initially you have to uh, it's a basically cycling event initially and after that you gather together and you learn more about it from the experts in the field so wow. that was the logo of their event right 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 Now how about this photo looks very interesting Um he is a commissioner of police pretty much famous in India uh because when the 2611 the terror attack happened in India at Taj in Mumbai he was one of the officers who was uh you know part of the uh, I would say the mission okay who was uh, the one person who actually helped uh I would say all the team members to uh Uh, you know with the event whatever was happening with all the chaos that was happening with the terrorist event so he was uh, the commissioner of police here in our city and i was lucky enough to meet him he is one of another inspirational individual and all the uh, young people of our country look up to him uh, when we talk about an inspiration or when we talk about uh, any particular career uh, what he has done is just incredible hmm sounds like a great guy yeah and very handsome as well i was actually going to ask if it was your husband <laughs> oh no <laughs> i wish <laughs> just kidding okay all right half marathon here jamunda hills half marathon 
what are we looking yes this this was one of the hill marathon which hap- which happens here in nasik uh, because we are surrounded with lots of mountains and hills so i basically educated the participants uh, about what they need to be eating before their run and between their run and after their run ah very informative very cool all right ton of people here what are we looking at yeah so this is a mumbai based uh, sports management company or academy i wouldn't say a company but an academy wherein uh, all of these students are uh, being taught how to manage a particular team or the finances and all those aspects so i was basically invited uh, to educate them about the sports nutrition and why it is important how it can help a team or an athlete and how an individual or a sports management individual can make sure that there is a nutritionist on board uh, with a team or with an athlete to make sure that they are performing well so it's just more of a brainstorming session which i had with them mm, very fascinating seems like you're helping a lot of people across the board athletes yeah. but also other professionals all right um uh, this was these were the gym uh, trainers uh, because here when we talk about fitness people tend to go to the gym and you know work out so uh, mm-hmm. this was a session with the gym trainers with regards to uh, any sort of a questions if they had uh, talking about nutrition or the diet aspect and like how we are discussing any different sorts of a diet or supplementation so it was more of a q and a session with the uh, budding gym trainers for them to understand if you are practicing nutrition or if you are suggesting any sort of a diet to your client who is working out in your gym then what are the parameters you should consider and how you should be suggesting the nutrition or diet hmm fascinating you sure are helping a lot of people out there shreya <laughs> i am that's the goal <laughs> now how long have you been running your own company spirit march 8th is going to be second year Wow, very nice. It must be exciting to be able to lead the charge in so many ways and of course having won many awards and being very reputable. Yes. Okay, cool. What the, what what is me like? with one of the runner when I completed uh, one of the runs which happened here in uh, Nasik. I think this was in 2020, yeah, before COVID. Mm. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, so I suppose even for you all there because of the pandemic a lot of the events haven't been on. What else was on your bucket list either for last year or just even in the future? What would you like to do? Maybe even just running wise. Uh running wise unfortunately I had to take a break because uh uh there was a little discomfort which i was facing because of running so my plan is to switch to either another sport or at least be physically active because my job is something and considering the covid situation now it's become like a desk job because all the sessions are also happening online uh okay. it's very important for you to be physically active because it also takes care of your immunity aspect so i would definitely think of getting into some or the other sport or uh, depending on where i will be and apart from that talking about the bucket list for sure i want to work with the maximum amount of ultra endurance athletes in the country because it's upcoming a lot of people are taking up triathlon ram raw deca uk and all sorts of ultra endurance events so i want to i do want to work with them because it's very much exciting and challenging and apart from that i do want to work with a team whether it can be a football team or a cricket team or any of the kabaddi team uh, and take care of their nutrition aspect so that's basically uh, my bucket list which i want to achieve probably in two years i would say one or two years down the line yeah. well it seems like you've already accomplished enough for one lifetime it's just going to be amazing to see what else you accomplish shrey how old are you 28 wow So young and ambitious and already very accomplished. Well done with everything. Thank you. Oh, you were talking about running and having discomfort. Believe it or not, we've had many guests on the show, including myself quite frankly, who were runners perhaps in the earlier years or even in later years 
And for me, it wasn't an injury or discomfort that caused me to move to bicycling. I just started doing triathlons and really enjoyed the bicycling uh, leg of the, the race and the training. But other athletes also because of knee pains, knee injuries, or other injuries had switched to cycling. So it seems like this is the perfect opportunity for Shreya to get her bicycle shorts on and yeah. in the crowd. <laughs> Even actually this month only I was uh, looking out and, you know, asking people for what kind of cycle I can go in for, uh, just not to be on a competitive phase, but uh, on a recreational purpose, if I want to start with cycling, I think that's something which I look forward to for sure. Yeah, cool. Can't wait to have you back on the show to talk about you doing one of Inspire India's races, like the Deccan Cliffhanger, or maybe that one in Probably. the Himalayas. <laughs> Probably. You never know. Okay. Very cool. Okay. Everyone's dressed up very nicely here. What are we looking <laughs> at? So this was one of the sports medicine conferences which happened uh, in Jaipur in India. And I was one of the speakers uh, to talk about uh, the sports nutrition aspect when we talk about sports medicine. So this was the pre-conference session and the, uh, along with me, all the speakers were there uh, who spoke about different, different aspects of, from a sports nutrition point of view. Okay, very cool. Now, this beautiful garment you're wearing, would you consider that a sari? No, 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 that's not a sari. Okay. All right, how about this This one? is sari. Ah, yes. Yeah. So this is the same award, the most influential uh, you know, individual. So this is the award which oh. I got from the Margin Brothers. That's pretty cool. Now, how young were you when you received that? <laughs> um, this was 2019. Okay. Two years back. And then, yeah. let's see, two years ago? 26. 26? Holy. Wow. Amazing. Well done. That's very cool. Thank you. Now, Shrey, a, lot, a few more last questions that I have for you before we conclude this session. We've talked a lot about the macronutrients. We've kind of touched on some micronutrients. You were talking about supplementation and there's so many other topics that we can discuss and so much to explore. So I highly recommend that the audience reaches out to you again, you know, on one of your channels, whether it's on your website, of course, a lot of good details there explaining some of the things that we've kind of already discussed, but People can get an idea of what you do, how you work, and of course, specifically to ultra endurance nutrition. And they can contact you there as well. Also on your Instagram, on your Facebook, both for your company and for yourself personally. So there's many ways to get in touch with you. Yes. I would just wonder what are some, you know, big tips, big takeaways that you would want the viewers to get from this session. We've kind of done a whirlwind tour of many subjects, dive deep into a few. What would you want to tell everyone watching that can help them immediately? A um, few of the things, first thing is start listening to your body. Whatever small, small signals your body's trying to tell you, whether it's a knee pain, back pain, headache, dehydration, or whatever it is, start analyzing them. Start listening to your body. That's the first takeaway I would love to give. Second is start aligning your nutrition with regards to the signs, what your body is trying to tell you. And analyze whatever kind of food you're eating or putting inside, how it is affecting you. Talking about the physical aspect, talking about the emotional aspect, talking about the spiritual aspect and all of that. So if you know that I've eaten something which is messing up with my body, try and analyze all those small things. Another third thing I would like to recommend is start having small and frequent meals because uh, we just uh, get going with the trend what is happening around us or what the other individual is doing. So always keep an approach of it's my body and I need to understand what is suitable for me rather than knowing that what the other person is doing. Their body is totally different. Your body is totally different. So keep it very, very individualistic. 
and always make sure to have small and frequent meals because they are excellent to take care of your energy levels to take care of your fat metabolism to take care of your mood to take care of your overall well being okay and lastly if you are an athlete make sure you fuel for your sport try and eat before during and post your training session or post your event don't get deprived of the nutrition don't get deprived of the nutrients i would say because we always try and seek for any particular nutrient but we don't understand the, that we are missing out on the other one so keep a balance of all the things very simple if you're plus uh, if you're exercising or if you're uh, minusing something from your body make sure you plus it with the right nutrition or with the right supplement strategy so that there is a good balance of uh, whatever things you're doing in your life and always if you have any queries you can definitely feel free to get in touch with me mm. excellent that sounds great now shrey not to get too deep into it but this whole notion of superfoods or just any nutrition in general what would you recommend maybe one or two things that all of us could add to our diets no matter you know if we're high fat low fat high carb whatever diet someone may ascribe to what is one or two things that you think would be just a great addition to anybody's diet uh for sure vitamin c uh considering the situation going around us definitely we need an extra dosage either it can be from a food what you're eating or either it can be supplementing it uh because we need to keep up our body's immunity uh you know to take care of all the internal aspects what is happening inside so vitamin c is something which i would definitely recommend either you can have citrus fruits or vegetables in your diet or you can just pop in a pill which has good amount of vitamin c uh to take care of the immunity aspect as well as the other metabolism that is happening inside second thing is uh, your omega 3 okay so either in a fish oil format or probably uh, in the food format you can definitely always take care of it to make sure that you are recovering well and your body is getting the adequate amount of omega 3 uh, no matter whether you are an athlete or a normal individual and third thing is vitamin d I have seen so many athletes till date and most of the time when I ask them to do the blood test their vitamin D is always on the lower side or on the moderate side even if we are going out the absorption really matters the kind the type of vitamin D you are taking really matters so make sure you incorporate milk and milk products or vitamin D rich foods in your diet along with a smaller dosage of vitamin D supplement on a regular day basis to make sure that you know all of your functioning is well your bones are in good health and plus as per latest research vitamin d has also proven to improve your immunity especially in the covid situation so if you have good vitamin d levels your recovery rate will be much higher so i think these were the three things which i would definitely love to recommend to all of our audience awesome thanks for those quick additions to our nutrition i'm sure it'll help many but i do hope that others will take the step to follow you on social media reach out to you with specific questions hopefully we can all join one of your upcoming uh, virtual seminars that you've been hosting but we'll be following your journey you're still very young very accomplished but i'm sure there's so much ahead and we can't wait to see the teams that you'll be working with and all of the elite athletes and just the everyday person and how you're able to help people make sense of a very complex subject i think maybe a lot of people they always do a lot of training you know they always get a lot of experience from races you know to take care of the physical and the mental aspects but i think probably for the average athlete perhaps a non elite athlete they you know we don't tend to consider the nutrition nutritional aspect of our training our preparation and then even the racing but as you mentioned there's a very high percentage of success that is tied and correlated to a good nutritional strategy and not just during a race but even before and to lock in the gains of a hard session on the bike some intervals some high intensity workout it is important to take care to make sure that we are not just recovering but also developing the best that we can so thanks a lot Freya for taking the time to educate us on the subject of nutrition I know this is just the beginning of our discussions uh in when it comes to nutrition on this show. So we look forward to having you back. Perhaps we can dive deeper into certain subject matter, but otherwise, we thank you so much. 
very informative, a lot of food for thought. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I would love to be uh, back and talk more and more about it because uh, there is a lot of information on the internet and, you know, people uh, really don't know what is there in a particular food or how it is going to benefit them. So it's always a pleasure to educate more and more and more individuals uh, when we're talking about nutrition. And like I said, it's more of a passion which is driving me towards doing what I'm doing now. So I would love to be uh, back and thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, and I would love to see you again. Yeah, most definitely. It's always great to have people who are passionate about what they do. We know you care and you know what you do is right. So who do you want to nominate for a future episode here in closing, Shreya? Another nutritionist, somebody that has inspired you, maybe a story, you know, that you think is worth sharing? Uh, one of my good friend who has done uh, almost 24,000 kilometers of cycling. Wow. Yeah. So I would definitely would love to recommend him. His name is Yogesh Gupta. He has started a cycling journey from Portugal to India. And I think he did it in some 800 days. I'm really not sure about, but he can be the right person to share his journey and how he did it and how was it. And uh, I hope it inspires a lot of people. Yeah, sounds amazing. Sounds like a great story. But of course, you have an incredible story yourself and you're on a great journey. So thanks again, Shreya. And for everybody who's watching at home, thanks for tuning into this episode. A lot of food for thought, a lot to consider. Definitely reach out to Shreya if you have a specific question. We do look forward to having her back on the show. But as you can tell, there's a lot to consider when it comes to nutrition and perhaps you've neglected it. So maybe this is the time to kind of get back on course. Check out Shreya's Instagram, her Facebook, her website. Try to learn a few things and dial in your nutrition. Until next episode, everyone, keep spinning ultra. 